Welcome to today's talk on using eBPF to create Windows drivers. My name is Alan Jarrett, and I work as a developer at Microsoft on eBPF for Windows. Dave Thaler, an architect at Microsoft, generously assisted in preparing this presentation. To start off, let's cover the reason why using BPF to generate Windows drivers is important. In today's evolving threat environment, technologies like hypervisor protected code integrity, as well as similar technologies on Linux, have been developed to enhance the protection of modern operating systems. As both technologies work in a similar fashion, this presentation will primarily cover Microsoft's HVCI, but I will highlight any differences specific to each platform. At their core, both technologies ensure that only signed code pages can execute in the kernel, making it significantly more challenging to inject malware into the kernel and facilitating a clear understanding of the system's running components. A quick overview of how hypervisor enforced code integrity works. When code is loaded into the kernel, it is initially marked as read-only, without the execute flag, essentially just data. The kernel then asks the memory manager to mark these code pages as executable and to perform relocations, which triggers a call to the secure kernel running in VTL1. The secure kernel then verifies the signature, including the signing authority, performs the relocations, and marks the code pages as executable. At this point, the code can be executed in kernel. If we then examine the JIT workflow in this light, we can begin to see the problem. BPF bytecode is first loaded into the kernel, where it is converted into native machine code by the verifier and JIT compiler. At this point, the kernel needs to mark these pages as executable, but code pages generated by the JIT compiler lack any form of signature and cannot simply be signed as the signing keys are kept offline. While it is possible to move verification and JIT into the hypervisor, this is not an ideal solution, as one of the goals of the secure kernel is to reduce the amount of code that needs to be trusted and the verifier and JIT compiler tend to be large blocks of code. The solution that was adopted on Windows is to move the process of verification and signing of the, off the machine and into a trusted environment. The initial steps of the workflow remain the same, with BPF programs being written in C or another high-level language, followed by being compiled into an ELF file containing bytecode. The bytecode is then verified and the bytecode is translated into C with each BPF instruction generating a corresponding C code. This transformation maintains the constraints that the verifier checked, ensuring that the generated C code is still verified. The generated C code is then compiled and linked into a Windows driver using the standard Windows compiler toolchain, thereby gaining the full suite of security features like control flow guard, and speculative execution protection. In addition, the C compiler can then further optimize the code, potentially even using profile-guided optimization. Finally, the resultant driver is signed, just like any other Windows driver. Debugging BPF programs has always been a challenge. One of the traditional tools for debugging is via the use of BPF print K calls which while useful, isn't ideal as one cannot simply place breakpoints or examine call stacks. The process of converting BPF programs to Windows drivers adds an opportunity to make debugging easier. If the original BPF program contains BPF type format data, aka BTF, then this data is translated during conversion process and can be used by the debugger to allow placing breakpoints in BPF programs. Likewise, all the BPF register state can also be examined in the debugger 
and the BPF program can be stepped over instruction by instruction if needed. An area for future improvement is to parse the dwarf debug data and maintain the mapping from register to BPF variables. In this demo, we can see a developer compiling a simple connection tracking program into a BPF program. The developer can then use this toolchain to convert the BPF's ELF file into a native Windows driver. The developer can then load the BPF program into the kernel. Finally, the developer can then step through the code in a live kernel debugger. This demo shows how to build a BPF program, then convert to a native Windows driver, and finally debug it. The first step is to compile the BPF program using Clang, the same way it is done on Linux today. Next, the BPF program is run through the toolchain to convert from an ELF file to a native Windows driver. This system is set for test signing mode and the toolchain signs the driver using a test signing certificate by default. Finally, to test the new driver, we first install the eBPF runtime onto this machine. At this point, we can load the eBPF program. As we can see, the connection tracker program has been loaded and attached to the SockOps attach point. We can then switch to the debugger, break in, set a breakpoint on our connection tracking function. As you can see, it's almost immediately hit due to traffic on the machine. We can then step through the code line by line and observe the state of the BPF registers. There are several possibilities we are exploring as potential future directions for this project. The first is to offer native image generation as a service, where the developer could potentially submit a BPF program, have it verified and compiled, then download a signed Windows driver. The second is to potentially port this to Linux, where instead of generating signed Windows drivers, it could emit signed Linux kernel modules if desired. The third is to improve the ability to debug BPF programs by adding support for debug information not currently present in BTF, but present in Dwarf, and to use this to provide register to BPF variable mappings. Finally, there needs to be a solution for dynamic code generation scenarios like BPF trace where there isn't a signature to be checked. In conclusion, hypervisor code integrity is already available in Windows and has been proposed for Linux. Similarly, BPF continues to grow in popularity, both on Linux and Windows, but this poses a conflict as JIT and HVCI are fundamentally incompatible. The solution outlined here is to move to offline verification and signing of BPF programs, which offers several benefits beyond simply making it work with HVCI. Thank you for attending today's presentation. If you want to know more about this project, please visit our GitHub project page at github.com slash Microsoft slash eBPF for Windows.